so hello everyone uh, my name is amaya uh, so i will be discussing uh, introduction to uh, js and turbo modules in react native new architecture so have you ever find react native app to be slow or need for synchronous operations or find initializing native modules at the start of the app unnecessary these are some of the challenges that react native is facing to solve this problem facebook and open source community has introduced new architecture in 2018 based on my understanding i am going to help uh, you to understand more about jsi interface uh, fabric and turbo modules based on my knowledge so, a little bit about me uh, as the uh, has been introduced so you can find all my social or you can connect me with uh, you can all find all my socials on my website So let's understand the current architecture of React Native before understanding the new architecture. So a React Native app is made up of two separate pieces, the native code and the JS code. The problem is there are two different languages, so they cannot speak to each other. Luckily, we have a React Native bridge, which allows native, uh, native code to talk to JS code and vice versa. Without the bridge, there is no way to send any information around, around the points. But how does it work? To figure that out, let's look at what happens when you open your React Native app on a mobile device. An operating system, let it be Android and iOS, creates a main thread, also called as a UI thread, and assigns it to app. The main thread spawns a, JavaScript, uh, main, uh, spawns a JavaScript thread and a shadow thread. As you might know, React Native is a multi-threaded architecture. There are three uh, threads, main thread, shadow thread, and uh, the UI thread. So now the shadow tree job is to calculate the layout of JS code sending by JavaScript thread and send that info to the native side. Uh, let's see uh, this with more, an example. What if you have a button to, and uh, uh, you have created a button in JavaScript to, and you have to disable a button on the press. So uh, to disable a button, we have to set the property of the JavaScript set and send that uh, over the bridge as a serialized JSON object to the uh, UI thread. So we can also pass as a function as a callback. So if the button is pressed, the native event is sent to JavaScript side, callback is executed. Now the majority of times, everything uh, works perfectly. Like the, the, the heap and hop between the JS side and the, uh, the uh, native side works perfectly. Well. Like, but like real live bridge, you eventually get traffic jam. So what I mean by traffic jams, I will uh, elaborate more with an one example. So if you have a very long list of items and you scroll very fast, you might see a blank screen before the rest of items are shown. This is because on native scroll event in the main thread sent to the JavaScript thread from the main thread. So JS thread sends the new layout information to the shadow tree. The shadow tree calculates the layout and send it to native side. While scrolling uh, fast, you get a bunch of these events that causes traffic jams across the bridge. So we will be discussing how new architecture of React Native help us to solve this problem. So the communication between the JS and the native side is asynchronous. While, uh, while asynchronous communication is great in most cases, there are certain use cases like uh, the scroll event that we discussed uh, earlier. As soon as you scroll, you want, to know, uh, you want to know what happened in the main thread. With the current architecture of React Native, you may not be able to do that. Uh, and the bridge is not probably the best uh, use case. And also the native models that we uh, talk in the first slide, the native models we use in app are not, are not lazy loaded. All the native models load at the start time. So uh, what is the solution for it? The React Native new architecture will progressively see the deprecation of the bridge in favor of new a uh, new element called as a JavaScript interface, JSI for short, an enabler for Fabric and Turbo modules. So uh, what is a JSI? So JSI allows a few, uh, for a few exciting improvements. The first one is when that the JS bundle is not bound to JSC JavaScript core anymore. It can be used in other JS engine. In other terms, the JSC engine can also be easily swapped with other potentially performant JavaScript engines like Hermes. So for Android to uh, make Android performant, uh, React Native introduced Hermes engine. Uh, so, uh, so, so the JavaScript engine can be swapped uh, the, the JS engine can be work with Hermes or any other JavaScript engine that will be introduced in future. The second improvement is the, found, uh, is the foundation of this new architecture. By using JSI, JavaScript can hold a reference to C++, uh, can hold a reference to C++ post object and invoke methods on them. So JavaScript and native side will be truly aware of each other. So, uh, so for this architecture, we are using bridge. So uh, uh, the, everything uh, on the bridge JavaScript copies it. So uh, it is it is a change. Uh, the, the JavaScript will not keep a copy of it, but it hold a reference to it. 
so the second improvement is foundation of this new architecture uh, the, in terms jsi would uh, allow for complete inoperability between all threads with the concept of share ownership the javascript code could communicate with the native side uh, uh, and the uh, and the js thread and they won't need any serialized json messages to pass across removing congestion across the bridge and an asynchronous issue so uh, and now uh, an analogy would be uh, uh, we call a dom method in javascript in the browser for example in this statement where el is document dot get element by id uh, we, uh, we, we get element dev so uh, el holds a reference not a javascript object but an object that is possibly instantiated by the c++ in javascript called el dot set attributes with and 100 uh, with 100 so we end up synchronize uh, synchronously invoking the set with method in c++ that change actually the width of that element in react native we uh, we can similarly use the javascript interface to invoke methods or UI views and native models that are implemented by java slash objectives near swift language so uh, this is the uh, i will be explaining uh, it with a very sh uh, short example so javascript interface which allow us to register model with the javascript runtime so these methods are available via global object in javascript world the methods can entirely be written in c or they can be a way to communicate between the objective c on ios and java uh, java code in android uh, here is the example of a jsi module however note that c module is not a jsi module out of the box we need to change some parts of the code on android and ios to make it a jsi module i will be not discussing how to set up a jsi module in a uh, react native project uh, you can find uh, uh, those blocks you can find uh, the, the setup uh, in the blocks uh, out there so we will try to understand jsi on higher level for the piece of code uh, so as you can see uh, this is a c function so uh, i will uh, i will uh, walk through uh, each and every function so so inst uh, so install function takes one parameter uh, on the, and that is our JS runtime. Inside the function, we register a method named called hello world, which will return a hello world string when we call it from JavaScript code. The function create from host function is a function uh, 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 invoke when uh, C is called. So JSI runtime dot global dot set property is where we bind the function with JavaScript runtime global object. So function uh, create from host. Um, so uh, the parameters, uh, the, uh, the, par the runtime parameter represents a JS runtime where our JavaScript code is running. The prop name ID is an identifier to find our function. It is a simple string. Param uh, the param property uh, is the number of params this function will have in, 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 in our case it's zero as we are only printing a string hello world. So a function that help to invoke we call a global dot hello world from JavaScript. Uh, this is how we so this is a, a javascript implementation we call that a jsi uh, module inside our javascript code and um, uh, it will it will uh, print hello world in the center of the screen so um, so talking about fabric so in the current architecture all ui operations like creating natives managing children text are handled by native modules called ui manager module the react uh, uh, the, Re uh, the React reconciler sends UI commands over the bridge, which are eventually handled by this model and delegated uh, to UI implementation. This is done, uh, creates shadow nodes that represent the layout tree and pass to the Yoga. Uh, Yoga is a uh, layout engine uh, developed by Facebook and uh, it sits in the shadow tree to uh, measure your layouts. Uh, and yoga to determine the relative coordinates based on the flexbox style. So the, the native side uh, does not understand what is flexbox. So we require a library uh, layout engine called yoga. So that's it. So in the new system, uh, the UI operations are directly export to JavaScript as function using JSI interface described uh, above. Uh, the new UI manager can create component descriptor and shadow node for a specific view types like text, view, images, and the communication between the Java and Objective C uh, to draw the platform UI. So uh, there, uh, there has been introduction of Turbo models. So what exactly is term? in the current uh, in the current architecture? If you use any native modules, they all will initialize and your app start. If you use if you have hundred plus native modules and you use only two for uh, for some screens, the hundred the all hundred native modules will be initialized at the start of your app. This hits the start performance of most of them as there are no, as there is no point to initialize all of them in the start. 
So to address this issue, they introduced turbo modules. Turbo modules lazy load your React Native component or uh, React Native modules. That means you only initialize them when you use them. The turbo modules with JSI improves performance of React Native apps uh, by X times. So with uh, with all these changes in the architecture, uh, deprecation of breach, uh, deprecation of breach, support of sync operation uh, using turbo modules and much more will improve React Native app performance in magnitudes. Um, uh, so there are some libraries that have adopted JS and you can uh, use them uh, now. Uh, so uh, one is the React Native Vision Camera, uh, React uh, Native uh, Reanimated Version Two. So there are tons of uh, uh, there are tons of libraries that have adopted uh, JS, and you will see a significant performance improvement in this. So, I think I have conveyed my point uh, in introduction to the JS. So, uh, you might have understand that uh, the the, uh, the old architecture, the bridge, sense, uh, the the bridge, uh, the bridge and the, uh, asynchronous operations are uh, are good, but um, it's not be the perfect for everybody use case. So, the new architecture focuses on improving the performance as well as uh, as well as uh, allowing us to uh, synchronize operations in the react native app 